Welcome back to Three Barrow Farm and welcome spring. Everything is growing bigger with the recent rain and warmer days we've been having here in central Victoria. Previous to the rain that we recently had, we've been having long dry spells. So I have been having to keep the water up to the garden, especially on the seedlings I just planted. There have been peas to tie up and the pea flowers are starting to burst. Earlier this year, I planted our autumn seedlings and seeds late. So our peas and snow peas might be a little late this spring. The potatoes I planted three weeks ago are bursting through the soil. I planted the sea potatoes around a foot deep into the current soil and will cover them with more compost and manure to encourage more height. I've planted most of the first raisings of tomatoes and they are doing really well. I have some out in the open and others under frost cloth. I've also planted all the cucumbers under frost cloth as well. So I've been taking really good care of all the seedlings I have just planted from my first lot of seedlings I've raised inside the house. So I've just been watering them every day because that's what I was doing inside so I don't want to shock them even further by changing their you know watering um, methods. So I've been watering them every day and um, yeah some of them have a little bit of heat stroke but it's just on those larger leaves. The younger new leaves are looking fine, so that's good. I also planted some carrot seeds under these planks. Now, I've seen this done by Jess over on Roots and Refuge, and um, let's see how they're going. So I knew there was gonna be a slater or two, we call them slaters here. Some people call them butchy boys. I don't know what um, what you call them, but they're these little creatures. Hopefully you can see that. And um, I'm worried that they'll try and eat the sprouts of the carrot seeds once they actually sprout. But what these planks are doing are keeping the moisture in on these seeds here because you basically want to put your carrot seeds pretty much just on the soil like they don't want to be buried too much so I've popped these on I'm just going to give them another water here's another slater <laughs> and we've got our friendly millipede as well I have found a slug as well. Um, so doing that watering just then did move some of the seeds. So I'm not sure if Jess just waters it once and then waits a couple of days until they sprout. Um, but, whoo, hello. <laughs> we have a centipede oh my goodness see these planks are bringing all the creatures out <laughs> look at that that's a nice nice big one length of my finger it's lost one of its um, snippers at the back so it wouldn't be able to um, snip me well but that gave me a fright <laughs> I'm gonna go and pop this one over on the wood stack <laughs> Okay, I know my chickens would love to eat this guy, but I'm gonna let it crawl into the wood stack there to live another day. <laughs> okay, we've hopefully had our fright for the day. I'm just gonna pop these on top. 
Now I've got a section over here that I haven't covered with a board, but I'm covering it with the frost cloth and I'm just seeing how it goes. So it's all about experiments in the garden here. Where have you been that you've gotten spider webs on you, hey? This is Luna. So I've definitely noticed an increase of um, insects around the frost cloth and on this bed here. Since putting the frost cloth on, there have been quite a few spiders. Obviously they like the climate underneath there. However, this frost cloth is also supposed to keep the heat out as well. So it's not just for frost, it is for those really hot days. So I'm interested to use it on those vegetables that don't like the huge heat when summer comes along. And you know, we'll see how we go, but this is my first time using frost cloth or this sort of cloth or any cloth really. I have used old bed sheets in the past to keep the frost at bay, particularly on my flower patch. This year, however, I've got lots of this now, so I'm gonna give this a good go. So far, it is working really well, so that's good. So I do have drippers in my beds, um, but this row in particular, I only have one. Um, I have two in every row, except for the Rio mesh. I just have one on that because it's just a single line of growing. Jackie, Jackie's trying to get under the <laughs> frost cloth. I need to get a few more bricks because that wind keeps blowing it up on this side. I need to put one more line of irrigation on this row here, this end row where I've got the frost cloth. So I will be doing that as soon as I can. Um, there's just many other things on the list that need to get done first. And um, yeah. <laughs> but I think this garden is coming along. It's getting there. There's a lot to take out. Um, I want to take out a lot of the onions and spring onions and that that have been in over winter and it's not just vegetables I've got a little patch of poppies in the middle here which will be lovely when they flower the kale is starting to bolt after being in the ground for nine months now we are harvesting and eating as much as we can before I cut the stems at the ground and plant something else more zucchini plants have gone in the ground too. These ones are Long Florence and Costada Romanesco. I pinched out the lemon balm and dried the leaves for tea. It smells so amazing. Pinching out will encourage the plant to branch out from these points and we'll be able to get more of a harvest doing this. Harvesting lettuce is becoming an almost daily activity. I can't wait to be harvesting more vegetables and more herbs. That's all for this week, friends. I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Happy gardening.